In our news headlines today, Fitz Jackson says that parish status would do nothing for Portmore. Andrew Whitley will be leading the committee into the Portmore parish discussions. And Laden has been given four years for possession of a dangerous tool. In other news, the People's National Party's Maurice Guy is stating that Christopher Tufton should take full responsibility for the delays at Cornwall Regional Hospital. Our first news story. According to Fish Jackson, giving Portmore a parish status would change absolutely nothing for the town. Representatives of the People's National Party on Wednesday has been questioning the benefits to Portmore if it were to achieve parish status. Query was raised in relation to whether Portmore would get more benefits as a parish than it currently enjoys at the moment as a municipality. The Joint Select Committee, which is held to review this issue in regards to the proposal for the municipality to become the country's 15th parish, was recently held. South St. Catherine Member of Parliament Fitz Jackson was the first to indicate his questions. He was later supported by Senator Damian Crawford. Of course, these two went up against the Government Controlled Committee, which was chaired by South Central St. Catherine Member of Parliament Dr. Andrew Wheatley. Jackson, whose constituency covers a section of Portmore, has stated that a political expediency was at play and questioned the material evidence that a parish designation would bring to the people of Portmore. He further went on to state that when the Portmore municipality was created, the residents felt it was important to protect it from the political directorate. They insisted that in the act that established it that the boundaries of Portmore should not be changed without consultation with the persons who reside there. Before we consider any changes, we must show respect to the people of Portmore. It is the views of the people of Portmore that must be central to the decisions made that will affect them. Currently, there are talks of Portmore becoming a parish, and this was resurrected in 2020 by the Jamaica Labour Party in its campaign for the September 2020 parliamentary elections. Andrew Holness and the JLP is looking to follow through with the plans which include investment through infrastructure development such as a tech city in the heart of Fort Moore, which is home to more than 200,000 residents and has had an annual growth rate of 4% since 1991. The query coming from Fitzjackson is that is not sold on the value a parish designation would bring to the overall development goals for Portmore as the planned projects can be executed with or without such a tag. He is one of the longest serving member of parliament in the Portmore community. His suggestion is that if Portmore were to be declared a parish, residents would see no change when they woke up in the morning. Natalie Campbell Rodriguez, a governing senator, recalls sentiments of gloom by many disappointed residents who had preferred a parish designation instead when the new municipality was created nearly 20 years ago. As someone who served in the Portmore municipality and was one of the first councillors when that municipality was formed in 2003, my memory may not be great, but it's good enough to remember that one of the things that the persons within Portmore were proud of at the time was that they felt as though they were moving forward. But one of the disadvantages in the minds of many of the people was why couldn't they be a parish and they felt like they are quite grown. Damien Crawford's query was that he wanted to know which benefits would not accrue to the people of Portmore should it not become a parish, and further stated that the issues were being conflated. Plans for development in Portmore and itself should not be, and I hope that they are not dependent on its parish designation. And so I would want us to focus mainly on what are the benefits of the parish designation 
more so than the general plans for the development of Portmore. There is a 14-member joint parliamentary committee and they are set to review the proposal for the city of Portmore to become Jamaica's 15th parish. This is being led by Dr. Andrew Wheatley, who is the chairman, and he has urged the committee members to ensure that the Sunshine City of Portmore becomes the blueprint towards the advancement of other parishes in Jamaica. According to Wheatley, process really seeks to give Portmore full autonomy. And of course, if you look at the situation as it is, you have had councillors in Portmore doubling up because they are sitting in Spanish Town as well, whilst the councillors in Spanish Town are not allowed to sit in Portmore. So what we are seeking to do is to tidy up the arrangement to ensure that Portmore has that autonomy and to put in place other services to enhance the operation of Portmore with moving it to the next stage. Critical to this development is that in 2001, the number of communities increased from 22 in 1991 to 40 communities, with the introduction of the Greater Portmore housing developments along the western boundaries of Portmore. It was a promise from the Wholeness Administration in September, through their JLP manifesto, that given all the unique features of Portmore, it was the administration's desire to structure its development in a sustainable way that will benefit the people by designating it a parish. Dancehall entertainer Laden has been given a four years sentence for illegal possession of a dangerous tool when he appeared in the St. Elizabeth Circuit Court yesterday. The entertainer, whose real name is Akif Aarons, was also given an additional 18 months sentence for illegal possession of the accessories to match the dangerous tool. According to the judge, these two sentences will run concurrently. According to the police report, approximately 10.40 p.m. on October 28th, police men were in Cheapside, St. Elizabeth, when they signaled the driver of a black Mercedes-Benz motor car to stop. The driver initially complied but sped off when the police approached. A chase ensued and during that chase, an object was seen being thrown from the sunroof of the car. The object was recovered and it turned out to be a dangerous tool. This is the opinion of the People's National Party's Maurice Guy that Health Minister Christopher Tufton should take responsibility for delays at the Cornwall Regional Hospital. Dr. Morris Guy, who is an opposition spokesperson on health, has stated that the health minister, Dr. Christopher Tufton, made an error when he ascribed blame for the delay in the rehabilitation of the Cornwall Regional Hospital on the lack of capacity and technical knowledge of the local contractors. Tufton pledged a major shake-up to renovation plans at the Taipei facility. He further stressed that international expertise should be critical to getting over this slump, an obstacle he blames primarily on the lack of local experience in hospital build-out. Too many recalibrations and too many re-evaluations, too many variations and I believe it is substantially a function of inexperience. Christopher Tufton has stated that the reasons for the many delays at the Cornwall Regional Hospital is due to the lack of experience and knowledge about building hospital facilities in Jamaica. According to Morris Guy, however, he is not surprised at the latest attempt by Christopher Tufton to shift the blame from this obstacle at the Cornwall Regional Hospital to the contractors. He, however, believes that the blame should be shouldered by Christopher Tufton and his leadership style and marketing of the health ministry. Mr. Tufton should simply accept responsibility for the chain of events which has resulted in the setbacks of the project and the waste of millions of taxpayers' funds. He further stated that Christopher Tufton's suggestion to shift the project to overseas contractors is an indictment on the skills level and professional capacity of our tradesmen, and it is manifestly unpatriotic. 
He further went on to note that Tufton had failed equally to acknowledge the impact of the administrative issues and internal impediments which resulted in the delay of the procurement process. The Shadow Minister for Health, Dr. Morris Guy, has stated that the Cornwall Regional Hospital project to date, the country has already spent approximately $60 million for a project management consultancy from a foreign consultancy which did not resolve the issues at the hospital. He further stated that the naming of a new group of project managers is clearly another episode of waste of public funds. He seems to have become the hallmark of Minister Tofton and the Minister of Health and Wellness. Dr. Morris Guy further went on to state that he specifically raised concerns regarding the progress of the work at the Cornwall Regional Hospital at a press conference in December 2009. According to Dr. Morris Guy, in December 2019, he raised his concerns regarding the progress of the work at the hospital at a press conference. He highlighted then that the original deadline of April 2018 was shifted to September and then again moved to November 2019 and again in July 2020. Minister Tufton stated publicly that the rehabilitation of the hospital was progressing well, with the first phase slated to be completed in August. This assurance by Minister Tufton included several elements such as roof repairs, getting the 10th floor, and the establishment of the hoist for the removal of debris. According to Mr. Guy, however, every missed deadline adds to the waste of public funds. He further stated that the health minister and the minister of health and wellness should move with speed to deal with this matter with the seriousness that it deserves instead of promoting the use of foreign contractors. Like, comment, share and subscribe. What is your thoughts on the matters that have been discussed? Of course, there is the matter of the delays at the Cornwall Regional Hospital along with the recent sentencing of entertainer Laden for four years for the possession of a dangerous stool. And of course, the saga surrounding Portmore's impending parish status continues. Wheatley seems to be in charge and he is in the chairman position of that committee. But of course, Fitz Jackson and Damien Crawford are questioning the reasons behind making Portmore a parish what are the people of Portmore to gain from this parish status that they would not gain if it were to remain a municipality? Thanks for watching. Remember to be safe and vigilant and protect yourself at all times. Goodbye.